That means you can't get out. You can't get in. You can't get in. If we moved it up like eight inches, that would be funny. But no, they can't. But then people don't. You, you'd have a harder time walking around there. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to call to order the Building Zoning Economic Development Committee, Wednesday, June 28th, 2023. The time is 4 p.m. We are right on time. Um, clerk, can you do the roll call, please? Chairwoman Patty Smith. Here. Vice Chair Shweta Bade. Here. Alderman Carl Franco. Here. Alderman Mike Seville. Here. Alderman Bill Dinell. Here. Five present. First. Order of business is 23-0483, approval of the minutes for the Building Zoning and Economic Development Committee meeting held on June 14th, 2023. So moved. Second. Second. Moved by Alderman Franco, second by Alderman Donnell. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, next item, clerk, do we have anyone here for public comment? No, we do not. Thank you very much. The first item on our agenda is 23-0491, a resolution authorizing the execution of an inter intergovernmental agreement between the City of Aurora and the Fox Valley Park District describing the cost sharing of the West Illinois Ave to Orchard Ave Water Main Improvement Project and City Water Main, I'm pretty sure this is a run-on sentence, and City water main easement requirement for the proposed location of the water main. Good afternoon. Kurt Muth with Engineering Division. Sorry about that run-on sentence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so at Monday's INT meeting, I presented the construction co contract for this uh, water main replacement project. It's uh, located on the north and east sides of the Coal Center, which is the Fox Valley Park District headquarters at 101 West Illinois Avenue. Um, currently, there's water main on or Orchard Avenue to the west that dead ends, and there's water main on the east side of that building that serves the park district, has some fire hydrants on it, and is also dead end. Uh, that water main has history of breaks, and there's water quality issues on Orchard Avenue, so we'd like to loop that water main through the park district property. Uh, in order to construct that water main, which is majority on their property, we discussed uh, over the winter obtaining an easement, um, putting together an intergovernmental agreement since they are responsible for, responsible for about 20% of that water main. So they're taking responsibility for the cost share of that portion of the water main. And that's detailed in this agreement. And uh, we also have a temporary construction easement because we're going to need more room to work than that narrow easement where we're putting the water main. So. Uh, this item encompasses those three agreements um, and kind of wraps everything together so we can construct the water main as desired. Be happy to answer any questions. Questions? Alderwoman Bate. Uh, thank you, Chairwoman. Kurt, you mentioned 20% is Fox Valley Parks District's responsibility. Is it because they own 20%? How did we come up with that percentage? Uh, so a portion of the water main serves their building and is only in use for their services. Uh, part of it has public hydrants on it, and then the remainder of the, the new water main will be to loop the water main between the two. Uh, so the 20% covers the portion that just serves their building, essentially. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Further questions? A couple of questions. Oh, yeah. oh. Well, I was, I was oh. just going to piggyback on that. So you're saying the usage is 20% of the usage? <coughs> 
Uh, about 20% of the actual pipe length. Oh, the, oh so of, of the structure itself. It's yeah. Not, it's not how much water you're using. It's, it's, it's the, okay. It's more based on 20% of the pipe length that we're planning installing. Okay, okay. thank you. On the Can I follow up on that? Mind if I follow up on that? Not at all. Well, it's also because you're looping it, you're connected to all the residences plus the business on Orchard. So there's numerous uh, entities that are involved in this that's going to benefit from it. Correct, yeah. We've gotten several water quality complaints from Orchard Avenue having rusty water, and this will mm -hmm. allow the water to circulate in both directions and us to flush it better and keep that main clear. Okay, thank you. I'll uh, now. Just north of there, there's some homes on the river. I assume that they're not going to get be, um, benefit from this water service? Um, we have not had a discussion about their desire to ultimately connect to it. Um, they, would ha they would have an option now to connect to it if they would like to at their cost, and they would have to follow the, the pro proper procedures to get a new water service, but it would be available to them. Okay. And then my second question, as a, as a former Park District employee, I know that there's a lot of traffic that uh, goes down that area when do you when do you plan to do the construction um based on the the contractor that got the award and some other projects we're probably looking at late july august construction time frame um, there is that drive that serves those properties which we will probably utilize for pedestrian and bicycle traffic during construction hours during the day and then reopen the path at night or when they're not working we're not going to actually be disturbing the path for the most part but we'll need that area for staging and construction activity okay thank you i i have a question as well so i saw you you said you um in here that we have eight bids yes is there any reason why those bids weren't loaded into Registrar, so we could have taken a look at them. I'd like to know who's who. Who out there is bidding on our projects? Sure, I can have that added. I included it as part of the construction project and the INT agenda, but I can certainly add it to this one as well. Right. I realize it's a different scope, but mm -hmm. it's nice to see who who's bidding. Definitely. On it. Alderman Seville. Yeah, just to follow up on what Alderman Danell was asking, uh, I'm not familiar with any homes north over there, unless you mean on online place, uh, and I don't There's think there's some fishing cottages. Down along the river. You can see the lots on the. Oh, yeah, that's right. The three of them there. I know what you mean now. It's actually River Lane or something. Yeah, I think there's three or four of them, right? Yeah, yeah okay. That That's about where the water main currently stops and heads into the building. So they would potentially have access now. Yeah, I was thinking further north, but uh, yeah, you're right. There's like three or four there. So great. Thank you. Any other questions? So moved. Second. Okay, it was motioned, moved by Alderman Franco, second by Alderman Donnell. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Next item is 23-0465, a resolution approving a revision to the final plot for lot one of West Raymer's subdivision located at 55 South Constitution Drive and establishing <coughs> Lindsay Window and Door subdivision. And do we have a presentation for that? Yeah. Okay. Well, and you probably know more about this. Than I do. Yeah. So, so this is a um, this is the uh, the former Cub Foods that everyone knows about. And Lindsay Windows has been in there since 2020. Uh, they went through a, a zoning back then. Uh, Alderman Franco is aware of it. And um, <clears throat> as part of that uh, special use that was granted on the property. Uh, we were trying to see if we could retain some uh, uh, possible retail still on the site. So based on the final plan that was approved by uh, the city council and which included a small addition uh, for Lindsay windows, they are able to uh, do an, a small addition out front and with a reconfiguration of their parking lot, there's enough room for about a 10,000 up to a 10,000 square foot uh, building that is in that proposed um, lot two that you see up there along Constitution. So this is um, following up on a condition that was placed on that zoning in 2020. And we have Centil here. He is the, you're like the manager, owner, manager, oh, owner, part owner of Lindsay Windows, if there's any questions. I've got a question. Uh, yes. yes. For, do you want for, for Ed or? I think, I think for Ed. 
Um, so I was out there today and took a look. Uh, the berm, will that, will that stay in yes, place? Yes, yes, that stays. Um, they, they did landscaping on, on some of the perimeter related to the, uh, the new use that went in there. We left that frontage on Constitution uh, kind of as is, where the outlot is, just, it would be just south of where the BP is, that that would get uh, some further enhancement at the time that the um, uh, whatever would go in on lot two. So will the drive aisle that's right there opposite of the BP, will that remain? Th that'll or? all remain. That's that gray on there. That's an existing cross access easement. All right. Thank you. Sure. Alderman Spell. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've often wondered if this was going to uh, eventually move forward, so I'm very happy that uh, you are at this point in time. So my question is, does this Lindsay Windows have any immediate plans for for the development of the South Island. I'll, I'll let Centel answer that. I believe they have a broker already. Mm -hmm. Do you want to come uh, up? You're talking about where? For the outlaw. Yeah, I, I um, yeah. So we have. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Centel. I'm part owner of Lindsay Windows. Um, we do our, we are looking at some options there right now. Great. For that area. So okay. we're also looking to possibly develop our area, another 35, 40,000 square feet in the future, too. Great. Yeah, well, I'm, I, things are going well with you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it, we're really busy. We're actually working on that Broadway job right now with uh, trellis construction and stuff right on the river. Is that the uh, deck? Yeah, the deck, the deck development one. We're working on that one. Yeah, good. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Any other questions? I'm going to follow up, Mike. So do you have any kind of idea what type of commercial you would have at this location? Not yet. I think it was spelled out as more of a dental office type it, of it could be office or retail we uh we're working in conjunction with the mayor's office of economic development on trying to market it but conceptually in 2020 the architect laid out uh we could do up to a 20,000 square foot uh building on there so that'd be the maximum thank you if i could throw my two cents in um as we look going forward I wouldn't mind having like a, a bone of beef or a portillo's over there I'm just, just <laughs> suggesting that as we go forward so we get the broker on that that would be wonderful that's all i have to say any further questions on this item motion to approve motion made second motion um, made by alderwoman bade second by alderman franco um moving on are we keeping no all um, in favor all in favor could, and we oh. have to vote all in favor sorry Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So we, we would ask that the item on hold be brought up to active and um, discussed today. Oh, no. <laughs> Did you? No, don't, don't, don't. Just kidding. This, can I ask, this was an appealable item that we just voted on, correct? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, it is. Okay. So the held item is coming up. Yes. Okay, please. so item number 230171, an ordinance amending Chapter 49 of the Code of Ordinance city of aurora by modifying the zoning map attached there to the rezone property located near the northwest corner of north barnsworth ave and mountain street from r1 one family dwelling district to m1 manufacturing district limited um steve's gonna present this. hi everyone um, my name is steve bravo i'm here with the city zoning division i'm sitting over here so that i can use the computer or use the table but I feel like I finally made it. I'm sitting at the table. Um, <laughs> so anyways, here's the, uh, you can see the, um, the subject property here. Um, it sees two properties highlighted set back from Farnsworth Avenue. Um, right now they're zoned R1, which is the one family dwelling district. Um, we have the petitioner here with uh, Mr. Hernandez with his uh, um, design professional, John T. Berg, um, who I'm sure you all remember. Um, so they're proposing to rezone it. Excuse me? Can you please put the mic closer to you? Yeah. Sorry, is that is that better? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so anyways, uh, the petitioner is proposing to re rezone the property from R1 to the one family dwelling district to M1, which is the manufacturing limited zoning district for essentially for outdoor storage. Um, I'm sure you've seen the uh, some of the um, the engineering plans in, in Legistar. Um, so I don't know if there are any questions for staff at this point or um, um, maybe if I can just add a little bit. Um, so the, even though this area has historically been zoned R1, if you could go back to the map, do we have the comprehensive plan in there? Mm -hmm. yeah. So this area has been planned for industrial. 
Um, if you can go to three, maybe. Mm -hmm. There we go. So, so the area in the back there behind the creek off Farnsworth has always been planned <coughs> for industrial. So the access will actually be up to Sheffer. That area up by Sheffer is already zoned M1. Uh, if Steve, maybe you could go back one more time to the zoning map. Um, so part of that is already zoned M1. So this will all, this will bring this property into the same, same zoning category as that. And then, um, uh, as Steve said, it's going to be for a um, uh, basically a vehicle storage lot, uh, potentially uh, with access to Sheffer. So um, John Teberg is here, the uh, engineer on that. The reason we had delayed this is um, they had to work with engineering on the uh, getting the stormwater management to to work. And John can explain that a little bit more. So if there's any questions of me or John, or John can make a presentation. Okay. Yeah, we've been working on the site for a couple of years. Oh, John Teberg with Teberg Engineering. Uh, we've been working on the site for a couple of years now, uh, looking at options on what exactly would be the best fit for this. And since it was right next to Indian Creek, we did a wetland delineation and verified that we did have enough developable area to make it worthwhile. Uh, we originally looked at underground detention and through working with everyone in engineering, everyone was really concerned about long-term um, cleaning and maintaining that underground detention. So the last uh, two months, we've modified it now to a basic dry detention pond. Uh, so this will make things much easier for any future maintenance. Um, so it gives, still gives them plenty of room to work. And uh, since he owns the property all the way to Sheffer, uh, it'll allow us to work our way north with other development um, where this whole corridor could then be uh, established with new businesses. Any questions? Um, I question the staff. So we do, there are some homes in this area. Have you had any feedback or kind of communication with the homeowners? Sure. The there, there's... So, so this site plan is is cocked. The north is to the left, south is to the right. But um, maybe if um, I'm sorry, if we could go back to the aerial. There's a row of homes on Mountain Street, which is borders this on the south. So, what's going to happen? Um, once I, I'll show you on the aerial here. Um, so those homes you see lining the south end of the property, um, the the storage area will be pulled back to the standard 25 foot setback with a privacy fence. And then within that 25 foot setback, there will be landscaping. So that will give an increased buffer to the backs of those homes there. And at the um, uh, public hearing that we had, it's been a couple months now, I think at plan commission, uh, there were no, no neighbors that spoke. So are there any conditions on this item? Yeah, there there are um, five there are five conditions at um, Planning Commission they can see in the packet um, that we worked with the engineering department on, and then we did um, this uh, last week while we were bringing this up to BZ we did add a sixth condition which you can still see in the bottom of, in the fourth page of the ordinance um, that condition is that the driveway connecting the subject that the driveway connecting the subject property to Sheffer Road be paved with concrete and or fat asphalt. And I believe the I believe the petitioner has agreed to that. Yes. Yeah. And uh, just want to mention. Uh, Hi, my name is Robert Hernandez, owner. Um, as you can see on the plan, uh, we're going to work our way from south to the north to Sheffer. The next two, once we complete these two parcels, we're going to be working in the meantime and the plants all the way out. But the next two parcels are R5. And, uh, you know, uh, building department is in favor to obviously continue with the M1. The last parcel on Sheffer is already M1. It's just that we want to get started on these two from the south. And that's why we got the construction road for access. But I just want to mention that, you know, uh, we owe the the next two lots and then the one in Sheffer. So, but this is probably going to take a couple of years. That's why we want to get started. So we start progressing. So thank you. 
Any further questions? Alderman Dinell. Uh, Mr. Hernandez, um, I was out looking around and I, looks like com construction material is in that lot next to you, but you're going to be doing cars, storing cars? Oh, yeah, yeah. All, the, all this, um, I own a, a concrete construction and it's just expansion that I use. So that's going to be removed because, you know, it's not something that is going to be storage there. But I think it's the only thing I have there, the expansion. So, but you're looking to store cars, is that what we are aware of? Well, yes, it's going to be also storage, you know, trailers, uh, possibly trucks, you know. But everything's going to be paved. Originally, we proposed gravel, but uh, the building department city wanted to be paved, and I have no problem with right. that. Now, these are operational cars and trucks? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Not, not junk, no. <laughs> no. I... Um, I have developed a couple truck parking facilities in Montgomery, and at the end of the day, that's the whole project will be buildings on, on the last parcel and Sheffer and then mostly truck parking. That, that's the end that, that we'd like to see. So. All the cars or equipments that you're planning to park are owned by you or they're oh no that there will be companies that will rent rent the space rent the spaces yes um and is there a limit to how heavy the equipment or the truck or trailer could be well i mean the legal legal weight on on the road i mean i don't know it's seventy two thousand or something like that which the bridge they have access to to the property i think it's over 90 i think 92,000 the way limit on the bridges um, any further yeah. questions I just want to clarify did you say it's going to be a paved lot yes because mm -hmm. the plan calls for gravel but you, you made a change no we if if i want to park trucks it has to be paved so yeah the, we the show plan shows paved it's the drive shows gravel. That's why we had condition six. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there any, any, and I would like to just ask um, Steve, if you would please um, read the conditions into record for us. Yeah, of course. Um, so like I said, the first five conditions, the, uh, the planning commission um, voted on recommended approval on the sixth one is the one we brought forward right now. Um, so number one, no site improvements or use of the properties can begin until the final engineering plan has been approved by the engineering department. Number two, stormwater management, detention, and best management practice mitigation must be in place and construction found to be acceptable prior to use of the subject property. Number three, engineering fee and security for all site improvements will be required and must be submitted to the engineering department for engineering site plan approval. Number four, a plat of easement over the stormwater management facilities along with the establishment of the special service area uh, or the SSA for long-term maintenance is required and shall be recorded prior to final acceptance and release of the engineering security. Number five, no access onto North Farnsworth Avenue will be permitted for the subject property. And then number six, that the driveway connecting the subject property to Sheffer Road be paved with concrete and or asphalt. Thank you. Motion was made by Alderman Seville. Second. Second, second by Alderman Frankel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Anything further to come before the uh, bz &E committee? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Um, second. Yeah. I can't do so moved, right, can I? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody else can sit here for the rest of the evening. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.